Hello friends, another video from Drywall Repairman. On this channel we have mostly videos of drywall repairs such as patching, stress cracks, texture matching, small jobs, easy jobs, do-it-yourself type jobs. We are on the job working, so as I'm working I'm trying to make a simple videos to show you guys how to do watch and learn type videos. So let's go ahead and jump into the video here and see what's involved. Also, at the end of the video, please subscribe, like, and comment, and jump in the other playlists and watch my other videos. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Hey everybody, here's another patch job in the garage. These are condos, so this patch you can see on here, it has like metal brackets on it. They put these metal brackets on the trusses. I don't know if it's some kind of structural thing, but we're going to go ahead and pull the screws out of these brackets, but I'm also going to add some wood backing here, maybe wood backing here. We got a tape seam there that we're going to work on, an angle seam. This is a garage, so we're going to have to use 5-8 sheetrock. We always use 5-8 sheetrock to match 5-8 sheetrock's fire code. It's like a fire-resistant sheetrock. It's not resistant to fire. It just slows down the fire. So if something happened, like a car caught on fire, it wouldn't go into the main building right away. So let's go ahead and get this patched in. We're going to get this all cleaned up, pull out the old screws, Add some wood backing, sheetrock it with a piece of new 5-8 sheetrock. We're going to clean up this seam here that's blistered out, dig that out, the angle. Then we're going to turn around and tape all this. Then we're going to first coat it with a hot mud. I'm going to use a five minute quick setting mud. That way it sets up in five minutes, first coat. Then I'm going to turn around and slick it out. Then we're going to do second coat with hot mud and then I'm going to finish it with the texture. Here, I don't know if you can see up the lighting here, it's just a skip trowel texture. But we have a lot of videos like this, patching jobs. So this is just another patch job we're doing. Two by two patch in a ceiling from water damage, either from plumbing or leaking roof. Very common repair access area like this. So let's go over the basics you'll need for this. Of course, you're gonna need a screw gun. Always need a razor blade, clean razor, new razor, cut your new sheetrock, tape measure, wood backing, you need some type of backing, 2x4s work good, if you have 2x4s, wood sheeting, 1x3s, whatever you have you need wood backing to get some pieces of wood in there, fiberglass mesh tape, you need a fresh water bucket, texture, hot mud, and a piece of 5-8 sheetrock. This is the basics. So a little small job like this can get expensive if you don't have the basics. If you had to go buy fiberglass, you had to go buy wood, you had to go buy sheetrock, hot mud, texture, just the basics can get expensive. So sometimes a small job like this you might want to do yourself, but you got to also keep in consideration all the stuff you need to buy. Screws. You can't just buy five screws. You're going to have to buy a whole box of screws. So basic stuff you need. Sheetrock, screws, fiberglass tape, mud, texture, screws, basic stuff. So now we got the basics taken down. Let's go ahead and use our screw gun. We're going to pull those screws out. Get those screws out and take our wood backing, add wood backing. Once we get the wood backing secure, everything has screws in it and secure, we're going to take our measurements, tape measure, and then we're going to cut our piece of sheetrock. So let's get to work, people. You're wasting too much time. Like I said, pull the old screws out. Old screws out, old screws out. This is nice and square, so at least they did that for us. If this wasn't square, you'd have to cut it out nice and square. But it looks like the plumber actually did a clean job here cutting it out. 
this is the old tape seam. We're going to redo that paper seam. See, it just comes right out because it's paper. Original's paper. Get that old stuff out of there. Have my six inch always in my back pocket. So I'm just going to dig out the old stuff while I'm up here. Clean it up. I'm getting it ready for new sheetrock. Well, it's always a good thing you can pencil off your studs, but I just easy marking for your studs, just put a screw on the outside edge. You also want to tighten up the outside edge if it's loose. Look how loose this is. That's why we always want to put screws on the outside edge. You have one, two. This is 5 8 sheetrock, so you're going to have to use at least an inch and 5 8 or a 2 inch screw to get through the 5 8 plus through the stud. There you go. The smaller screws, inch and a quarter, are meant for half inch sheetrock. So you want to make sure you use big enough screws. You want to be able to go through the sheetrock and the stud nice and strong. There you go. Stuff like this you can do on your own, get it all cleaned up. Maybe you're not comfortable doing the mudding and the texturing, but just getting it simple, prepared, scraped up, cleaned up. And then maybe when you go get a bid from a drywaller, the price might be a little lower since you did a little bit of prep work. Plus it also shows that the guy that comes and does the work say, hey, this guy knows to put screws in, you know, I'm going to do a good job for this guy since he understands what needs to be done here. Scrape all this stuff. Also scrape out past your area. Any loose stuff because we're going to end up mudding this whole area. I'm going to get the backing in. Like I said, we're going to put a piece of backing here or here just to tighten it up. We have something to put screws in here, so this is good here. But you need to at least put something on this edge is most important. If you got extra, you can put one here, one here. But the most important is this edge. You can't just have screws in here, then the edge where the two meet, the old and new meet, are loose. So you don't want a loose area there. So always put back in there. If you got enough room, you can get a two by four in there. A nice two by four like that. Or you can go like that, no big deal. It's just something to get screws into so your patch is nice and tight. Areas when you don't have that much room to work with, you might want to use a 1x2 or 1x4 or a smaller piece of wood to get in there. It's real tight. Look around here, insulation is real tight, so I'm going to use my little piece to get in there. There's a little more room in here. A good go-to is 1x2s. If you can get your hand on a bunch of 1x2s, go ahead and use those. But I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm just using up basically scrap wood that I have on hand to use it up. Same thing, we're going through 5 inch sheetrock, so use longer screws. You want to always get screws in your backing, so hold your backing in place until you get a screw set. side that's nice and strong. Two by fours are always a go-to if you got them, but one by twos, one by fours work also the same. This one I'm going to take the stud over here a little bit because I want to get a screw on this side of the sheetrock and I want to get a side on this side. Now I can screw my new piece of my patch, my new sheetrock, and put screws in there, 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 there. I get a bunch of areas to put screws in, so it's a nice and strong patch. We don't want a loose patch, we want a strong, tight patch. Same thing, get a couple screws in here. I always do at least two screws in my backing. Nice and tight. 
This one's pretty tight here. This stud there, so I'm going to try to get another one in here if I can. Two screws. The patch to me looks like a 2x2, two two, but let's measure it. We want to make sure it's a 2x2. Two two. If you have several patches, you want to write down the measurements of all your patches. No, it's under 2x2, two two, so you would think you can go inside, but you want to just go with the wall. So I would just say 21, check both sides, 21 and a quarter by 20 by 20 and a quarter. So I want to go with the bigger measurements, 20 and a quarter and 21 and a quarter. We're going to have to cut it down so it's kind of off. You can also spend the time to make it perfectly square, but it's easier to just cut the patch back. So let's go ahead and measure that, get our piece cut out. 20 and a quarter by 21 and a quarter. Let's get our sheetrock cut out. If you're not familiar with what type of sheetrock you actually need, hey, I, I don't know if I need 5 eighths or if I need half inch, we'll just measure it. Measure it. So you can see the depth right there. It's over a half inch. So if you know if it's over a half inch, it's going to be 5 eighths. It's over a half inch, so it's going to be 5 eighths sheetrock. So that's a pretty easy measurement. You just measure the thickness of the sheetrock. 5 eighths. 5 eighths. It's over a half inch, as you can tell. 5 eighths. I would say it's more like 3 fourths, but we just say it's 5 eighths. Most garages need to have 5 eighths per code, but most people know builders don't always do everything per code. I carry sheetrock on hand. I got purple board, half inch. I got a big piece of 5 eighths here. I got littler pieces of 5 eighths. So I'm going to see if my smaller piece fits. If you have scraps like this, then you can use them up. More than likely, you might have to buy a whole sheet just to do. But this is not going to work because my biggest piece here, 19 inches. So I don't have any other bigger pieces of sheetrock. So I brought this whole. So I have two by four foot section I brought with me just in case. And I'm glad I did because the patch, this piece I have is not big enough. I could also piece it in. You can always piece it in, but let's go ahead and just take a piece off this new sheetrock. T-square will be your friend. If you don't have a T-square, you don't have to go out and buy one. You can also use a, a level or a piece of straight edge, like a 2x4. If you use a straight edge, you would just mark it. Say, well, I need 20 and a quarter, I said. So we'll just say 20 and a quarter. The mark down here at below 20 and a quarter by 21 and a quarter. Remember 21 and a quarter? The beauty with the T-square is that this top part will sit nicely on here. But if you mark both sides like I did here, I marked it here and marked it here, you could take your straight edge on the pencil line and level it up. Act like this is a level or a thing or a piece of wood and just there's your pencil line. But if you have a T-square, it's nicer because it sits flush on the edge and then you can run it across. But basically that gives us our cutout area that you need to cut out. When you're dealing with 5 eighths, cutting 5 eighths with the razor blade, you want to make sure you have a new razor blade. Because 5 eighths is thick and heavy duty. It's heavy duty. So what I like to do is just my pencil line, I like to score it one time. Get it going and maybe score it two times. And you also want to make sure you go with the same line three times. It's easier to give it a couple scores. If you give it a couple scores, then it's going to really easily snap. 
Then once you get it scored, just bump it. Cut the back side brown paper side, the back side. And snap it back the other way. Now we got that cut. So now we got our horizontal cut. Now we can do this cut. Just showing you on the camera here. So you can just cut it this way. Half inch would be good with just scoring it once. You can snap it, but five eighths is heavy duty, thicker stuff. So I give it two, three good scores, and then it can snap. You have to put a little energy into it. Once you snap it, then you can cut the back side of the brown paper side. Same thing here, just snap it off. If your edges are rough, then you can clean them up with your razor blade and router. But now I got a nice piece of sheetrock, brand new piece of sheetrock to install up there. So let's go ahead and get our sheetrock installed. As you can see, we got the tape started there and we got the sheetrock ready to go. So let's go ahead and get that sheetrock piece up there. When you hang patches, always keep your razor blade with you because even the best sheetrocker are going to have to cut it back. So if we cut it good, it's going to sit nicely. But I can already tell you, i got to cut it back right here. It's pretty good. There's a little gap there, a little gap there. No big deal. We're going to pre-fill it. Hold up your sheet. Don't use your head. I see a lot of guys, they use their hood to hold it up so they free their hands. Guys over the years that hang a lot of sheetrock, you're pushing down on your neck and your vertebrae, you're compressing your vertebrae, it's bad news. Any of the one that has neck problems, back problems, they know about compressed vertebrae, you don't want to do that. Remember how I put the stud right there, the 2x4? Look at that, now I usually get one screw on one side and a screw on the other side so it'll hold in place. Now it's held in place, my hands are free, so now you can go to town and start setting your screws. Plenty of screws, plenty of screws. Remember those trusses that ran this way, those metal ones? Get some screws in those. Both sides. Screw layout. I like to do every three, four inches and do a symmetrical, clean layout. Every three, four inches, no problem. There's that stud, so that's nice. That's a nice screw layout, nice and tight. You don't want loose patches. My wood backing here on the sides, that's extra credit. I didn't have to do that, but now it's nice and strong right there, really strong. A piece of wood I put right here, nice and strong, strong intersection. Strong, strong, strong. Piece of wood here. So I was able to get screws on this side, basically screws on all sides. That's a perfect, ideal patch. My metal stud going this way. Every three or four inches and you're good to go. My screw layout, nice and clean. I checked my angle, angle's not loose, but I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in it, see if I can get one in it anyways. A couple of screws in your angle on the wall side, that's if it's loose. So I didn't need my razor blade, I didn't have to cut it back. Next step, scrape it, you've got to use your 6 inch knife. Scrape all that loose stuff, make sure everything's scraped out of there, little paper goobers, any high spots, anything out of it, get it scraped out. It's going to get in your way when you go to mud, any loose tape, any goobers. I also like to scrape out that area. So if I get any, I got to mud that so I don't want anything. Fiberglass mesh tape. I always use fiberglass mesh tape. I don't care what anybody says. Fiberglass is garbage. I can't fiberglass angles. They are lying to you. I use fiberglass every day. I'm a licensed drywaller. I never have any callbacks. No problems. If you know how to use this stuff correctly, it's good. Right now, I will stick to this. But I like to use my spray glue. If you watch plenty of videos, spray glue, especially here where it's 
damage. I just a little bit of spray glue and angle real quick. I'm not putting a ton of spray glue. This is just giving it extra tacky. You don't need this spray glue. It's just extra. If you got it, use it. I love it. It's the best go-to. Especially it's cooler so the stickiness on this tape is not as sticky. When hotter weather it's really sticky because the glues are hotter. But then you just go ahead and fiberglass mesh tape. That old seam that I dug out, remember that old seam? Since I took out the old tape it's going to be channeled. Fiberglass anything. If you have a big gap, you can do two layers of fiberglass. It won't hurt. But my next step after this, I'm going to mix some mud and I'm going to fill it in, push it inside the gap here in grooves. Angle tape. A lot of guys say use paper tape. Hey, if I use paper tape on this, it's going to bulge out. If you know how to use fiberglass mesh tape, this stuff does wonders. What I'm doing is I'm going to put it in the angle like this. Basically 90 degree it. I'm going to take my 6 inch knife and run it on my wall side and angle side so I create a nice square edge. If there's a big gap in the angle, you could double layer it. You could do flat tape on the angle wall side or just do an angle. But you can angle, you can run fiberglass to angles. It makes a strong angle. Most people cock the angles, but I don't ever cock the angles only. You have to do at least a paper tape or fiberglass tape. This is a repair work, so I'm going to do fiberglass mesh tape. It's stronger than you think. It's a lot durable than paper tape. Once you get it all taped up, make sure it tape's pushed down with that spray glue. It really bonds and holds. Also, this tape seam, I gotta dig it out another foot, so I gotta move the ladder. This is a good time to take a look at anything else that needs to be done while you're muddy. Any nail holes, any other tape lines, any other repairs, get it all ready. Look at this. project now you're gonna to have to use a hot mud. You can see it got patched in and we ended up fixing a five foot long seam. I'm gonna to to tell the homeowner this is gonna be extra for fixing that seam. That wasn't part of the job. It had to be done. It could, we couldn't just patch that in. We had to fix that seam also because it was a crack water damage seam that went off. So to peel that off so once I'm done with all my hanging stuff, always put your hanging tools away. If you don't need them anymore, get them out of your way. As for me, I use a bucket method. I also have a tool belt, but I pull out the tool belt when I'm really getting serious with the big project. Hanging more than a couple of sheets of drywall, then I'll pull out the tool belt. But for these patch jobs, I keep everything I need, my basic tools, and a bucket. So grab bucket, I call it. Kick bucket, grab bucket. 